Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about our different phases of compilation inside of modern compilers like GCC. Now, in our previous series, C++ from scratch, we largely considered this process of generating an executable as a single step. So we would take some high-level source code, pass it to a compiler driver like G++, and on the other side, we would get an executable. Now, in reality, underneath the hood, there are multiple different components at play here and multiple different phases of generating executable. And we can typically break this down into pre-processing, compilation, assembly, and linking. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of these different stages and how our code gets transformed from C++ all the way into an executable. Now, the ex executable that we're going to be looking at today, or the, the file that we're going to be translating into an executable, is going to be this hello world.cpp. So just a simple program that prints out hello world. So our source code is pretty simple. We have a couple comments. We include IO stream so we can print out using stdc out. And then we have a simple main function that just prints out hello world with the new line character, followed by a return zero. Now, the first major phase that we have in generating an executable is typically pre-processing. And in the case of something like GCC, we're typically using something like uh, CPP or the C preprocessor. Now, one of the major jobs of the preprocessor is to handle these include directives and find these header files. So before we can use something like stdc out, we first have to get its definition. And this definition is typically inside of some header file. So IO stream in this case. Now what our preprocessor is going to do is search some predefined locations or locations that we specify um, for this IO stream header. And it's going to paste the contents into our source right here. That way we have the context of what stdc out is before we use it. So let's go ahead and see what that output looks like after uh, pre-processing. So we can go ahead and quit out of here. And instead of you know invoking CPP or the C preprocessor directly, we can do that through our compiler driver, G++. We can just tell it to stop after pre-processing. So here, let's go ahead and you know try that out. So to G++, we'll pass our source file, hello world.cpp. We'll create an output file called hello world.ii. And then we'll give it this dash E flag, right? Capital E to say stop after pre-processing. Okay, so we have our pre-processed code right here, hello world.ii. Let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll open up hello world.ii, and you can see that our file has changed quite a bit. So we have you know hundreds upon hundreds, thousands upon thousands of lines that we didn't write. Now all of this code is really just the contents of that IO stream file that we included using that include directive. Our preprocessor found that file and pasted it where that include directive was located. And if we go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom, we can see our simple four line main function here with our print of stdc out, but no more include directive, right? We've replaced that with the contents of that IO stream header. And we can even see from the header inside of some namespace stood here, we have our OStream object C out, right? The definition of what C out is, right? So this is what we were trying to include in the first place, right? That's why we have these include directives. So we can get the definitions of things that we're using. Okay, so that's a bit of the basics on pre-processing. A preprocessor is responsible for you know, finding all of these header files and including them um, inside of our source. It's also responsible for some other things as well, like expanding macros. Um, but we'll leave that discussion to another time. Okay, so now that we have this pre-processed source right here, let's go ahead and move on to our next phase of generating an executable, and that's going to be compilation, right? And in the context of something like GCC, that's going to be through CC1+. Now, what we're doing with compilation is we're translating from our high-level C++ into instructions for our processor, so things like x86 instructions um, in my case. So let's go ahead and see how our code changes right after going through compilation. So again, we'll just use G++ again to tell our, um, uh, with our compiler driver, and we'll just tell it to stop after this compilation phase. So to G++, we'll pass our preprocessed source. So it's hello world.ii. And then we'll create an output file called hello world.s. And then we'll use this dash big S um, option to say stop after compilation. Okay, 
So now we have this hello world.s. This is going to be our uh, compiled source um, from you know this uh, this pre-processed file. So let's go ahead and open it up and see how things have changed. So you can see we're we're squarely out of the realm of C at this point. Um, our compiler CC1 plus has translated our high level source um, into instructions now. So instead of having you know, C++ code, we now have instructions like push and load effective address and move and, and things like return here, right? But there are some things that we can point out that, that, that they can still make sense. So we have some string in here, hello world, right? That's our string that we want to print out. It's still embedded within our code. And that's sitting in this section called row data. Um, this just stands for read only data. So that's where our string is. Then we even see something that looks like our main function here. So we have this label main and inside of here, we have some you know, load effective address of this label LC0. So we can notice LC0 is where our string is. So we're say loading the address of our string and then we're doing something with C out and basic O stream here. So this is just our print using std C out. And then followed, um, you know, following up after that, we have some move of zero followed by a return here. Now, this is really just a return of zero from our main function. So we can still kind of piece together what's going on here, even though it's been translated from high level C++ all the way down into these instructions, right? So that's kind of what uh, the job of our compiler is. It's like doing this translation into these instructions that, that we want to use and that our compiler can understand. However, before a compiler can really understand these instructions and start running them, it needs to be in a format that our processor really can read. Now, our processor doesn't read text like this, right? This is something that's in a human readable format. So we, what we need to do is translate this into the binary ones and zero encodings uh, for these different instructions and data that our processor can actually read. And to do that, we need to go through another phase of generating an executable, and that's going to be assembly and using an assembler. So something like the GNU assembler in terms of, uh, or in the context of GCC. So what we're going to do is pass this hello world.s to our you know, GNU assembler through G++, and on the other side, we'll get a, you know, some object code or machine code, code that's in the format that our processor will eventually read. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we'll quit out of here, and then we'll go ahead and with G++ again, we'll pass our hello world.s, and then we'll create an output file called hello world.o, so this object code or machine code, and then we'll do this dash C to say stop after the assembler or after doing this assembly. Okay, so now we have our object code here, this hello world.o, but like I said, this is now binary ones and zeros, we can't really read it directly. So if we try to just concatenate this file and see the contents, you can see, you know, the output isn't very pretty here. There are a couple things we can print out, like you can print, or you can kind of see that there's hello world here. There's, you know, Ubuntu and GCC, but most of it is, you know, completely unreadable at this point. Um, but what we can do is use something like uh, uh, other utilities to disassemble this object code. So one of the ways that we typically do that is through something like object dump or this object dump utility. So to object dump, we can pass, you know, options like DC to say disassemble and demingle the C++ names um, of our object code here. So something like hello world.o. And then we get something that we can read. So we start seeing those x86 instructions again. And we can even see on the left hand side, their actual encoding in hexadecimal. So we can still see we have a main function that's doing some load effective addresses, some call say to some function, followed by a move of zero and a return, so a return zero. So now we have something that has these instructions and it's been translated into these binary ones and zeros that our processor understands. But we're still not quite at the place where we can run this yet. And the reason is, is because we still don't have the actual implementation for things that we need to run this code. So with our header files, you can see that uh, you, you saw we had this, you know, this you know, O stream C out object, but we don't really have the implementation of that object yet. That's going to be stored off generally in say some library and to link together our object code. Um, so this, you know, this dot O file we have with that library, we need the help of something like a linker. 
right? And in the case of, you know, on, on Linux machines, it's typically something like LD, right? That, that's the default linker that's often used. So let's go ahead and see how we can link together our, um, our .o file with our, our libraries that we need to generate an executable. And again, we can just use that with G++. So to G++, we can pass our hello world.o, this object code. And then um, on the other side, we can just create an executable called hello world. Now, because we're using G++ and you know this knows that we're working with this C++ code here, we don't even need to worry about specifying which libraries we want to link against. Um, our, our, our linker in G++ will take care of that for us. So we can just automatically, you know, just generate an executable here called hello world. Okay, so here we have our executable that we can of course run here. So we can just run hello world. Now we, we do a couple other things with this uh, hello world executable here. So we can see say the libraries that we're linking against. So we can use this utility LDD on our executable hello world. And you can see you know, what libraries we're linking against and where they're located. So in the case of you know, our implementation of our C++ things, that's going to be coming from this libstudc++.so, this shared library that we have right here. So for example, we can go ahead and, and take this and we can pass it through you know, dash nm dash d to get the symbols from this library. So we'll pass this path. And then from there, we'll just grep out something like C out. So you can see that we're getting C out from this library, this lib stood C++. And if we do kind of the same thing with our uh, executable here, right, hello world, and then we grep for C out in there, you can see that we're also using this exact same kind of uh, C out from this glib CXX. 3.4, right? So that's really where um, our C out is coming from. It's coming from this libstud C++ library, right? So that's kind of a fun thing you can do. Okay, so that's kind of the basics on how we do or how we you know, get from our high level C++ all the way down to something like an executable. Now, I think it's very important that we have this context, that we have these different phases of compilation because it can really help out with debugging. Right. Sometimes we have problems related to the preprocessor. Sometimes we have problems related to compilation and other times we have problems related to assembly or linking and knowing that these different components exist, how to kind of invoke, uh, you know, our compiler driver in different ways to get these intermediate results can really help out, you know, when we start getting more com complex errors. It also just helps out to really kind of understand what's going on underneath the hood in general. Now that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode of the series. As always, you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.